Hey guys, Nate here with Nate's Interactive Auto. Today I just want to give you a quick walkthrough on fuel trims. So anytime you see your long term and short term fuel trim, you see right here, uh, short term fuel trims at zero, long terms at 3.9. If you have a leaking injector though, things get a little bit hairy because with a leaking injector, this could go into the negative. So first your short trim will go into the negative and this can go up to 25 percent to try to correct so with a negative 25 percent being the highest point it will go to eventually with the short term running at negative 25 the long term will get to negative 25 because it's an overall average so once it gets to the negative 25 percent with the long term the short term will go back to zero so if you correct a problem you're only going to see it in the short term right off so you know it's going to take a little time to work its way into this long term now however if you have a intake leak unmetered air then you're looking at something a little bit different with unmetered air you're going to have to deal with so it's going to raise this up the short term fuel trim and as it goes up it's going to cause the long-term fuel trim to go up so with the leaking injector it would have been in the negative now it's going in the positive now a lot of what controls this is your oxygen sensor or your air fuel ratio sensors or your intake air temperature sensors so you have a map sensor also and RPM is another way you can look at this so if you have an intake leak you can look at your RPM and as the RPM rises, this should go down because there's going to be such a greater percentage of air that the percentage of air that's coming in unmetered from the leak to the intake that's not metered is going to be small in comparison if you're, say, close to wide open throttle or really high RPMs versus if you were at idle. Hey guys, Nate here. We're back at the whiteboard. Now, a moment ago, you guys just saw on the scan tool long-term and short-term fuel trim. So, what is long-term and short-term fuel trim? Short-term fuel trim adjusts any issues with the system to put the system at stoichiometric ratio. So, stoichiometric ratio is your air fuel mixture that's 14.7 parts air to one part oxygen so also you can look at a reading in your O2 sensor 0.9 millivolts would be rich 0.1 millivolts would be lean a good perfect mixture would be 0.45 so you can look up here, maybe you have one of these problems, fault codes specific to fuel trim. First we have P0170, fuel trim bank 1, P0171, system 2 lean bank 1, P0172, system 2 rich bank 1, P0173, fuel trim bank 2. P0174 system 2 lean bank 2. P0175 system 2 rich bank 2. If you have any of these codes, you guys want to stick around and see if you can diagnose your own problem. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you have long term fuel trim that is more than 10% negative, the PCM thinks the air fuel ratio is too rich. So it's leaning out the mixture calculation to return short-term fuel trim control to the correct range. So what this means is if you have a negative fuel trim of over 10%, our fuel ratio is too rich, so the computer's uh, leaning it out to put it where it's supposed to be, meaning there's a reason it's causing this and that is three possibilities not enough air 
more than the commanded amount of fuel is going into the combustion chamber, one or more sensors is reporting incorrect. So you have several sensors, you have uh, your mass airflow sensor, intake air temperature sensor. So make sure you guys check all your sensors, make sure they're functioning properly. Um, you can also use propane around a vacuum leak or in this case a leaking injector. So you can use that propane and find out if your sensors are working accordingly as they should. So 10% negative or 10% positive is not a great fuel trim, but on average for a vehicle that's older and worn, it's okay because the engine computer adjusts for the changes of wear and tear on the engine, whether it's mechanical or so forth and so on. So I always say a really good fuel trim, five or six, negative or positive, you're good to go on your uh, long-term fuel trim. If you have 1% on your short-term, 5% on your long-term, 6% total, add them together, that's not bad at all. But now if you have like negative 15 on short term and then positive 5 on your long term, then that's still bad because your short term is saying that there is a problem and it's adjusting it. So over time, that short term will adjust that long term to match the short term that way it compensates for the problem. So it compensates for the problem with the short term temporarily until the long term catches up and once it catches up the short term will go back to doing what it does and catch a problem or an issue when it comes up immediately. So you know if your air fuel ratio or lambda is above or below 1.0 as you can see here, above is rich, below is lean. So now if you have a long-term fuel trim that's greater than 10%, PCM thinks air fuel ratio is lean and it adds fuel. So there's three possibilities. One, unmeasured air, which could be a vacuum leak. And this is very noticeable at idle, mostly because as you raise engine RPM which also affects your fuel trim because you're bringing in a lot more air and with a higher percentage of air it's going to be less noticeable so if you have a vacuum leak that makes up 5% of your air and then you go to wide open throttle and it only makes up say 0.1 of your air then it will be less noticeable so number two less fuel than commanded so that's another thing your pulse width is adjusted via air fuel ratio sensor wideband oxygen sensor or your typical O2 sensor so it will adjust the pulse width of the fuel injector and it uses this as a map for what it should or should not be so this is how it works on some vehicles for the map of the sensor itself okay and just as before one or more sensors is reporting incorrectly so if one of your sensors is reporting incorrectly then you're going to have the same issue along with your rich to lean on your O2 sensor it oscillates back and forth and your catalytic converter is affected by this and as a matter of fact that's how it is in fact effective because it needs to go to an effective ratio because it needs to go rich, lean, rich, lean. 
because if it does not, then the perfect ratio would be a little bit different. So your catalytic converter is only doing this to be more efficient. So it will osculate to an extent. Actually, it will osculate continuously, always. So remember when you're checking this, you want to make sure that you're in closed loop. So allow the engine to warm up. Allow the O2 sensor to warm up. And remember, if you have a leak in your exhaust, then this could be a little bit of a problem because you could be picking up that you have too much air and it could be similar to what you might think to be a vacuum leak. So you need to pay attention to your other sensors and readings from your long-term and short-term fuel trend to be able to diagnose this correctly so you do not think that it's possibly a vacuum leak. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching. Just remember to be safe. And till next time, you guys keep on winning.